All righty, welcome to the presentation. I'm Trevor, and tonight we are going to build more on some of the things we've been talking about. Now, in the past past two or three weeks, we've been discussing um, blog commenting a fair bit. In fact, I think we had two full sessions talking about the value for marketers to go out there and, and interact with blogs that are out there and actually leave comments, right? In hopes to maybe build some links and to get some interest in the sites that they're promoting. I know some of you guys have been doing that and that's great. So let's let's keep working on that. But we 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 should have blogs as as internet marketers. Any any business needs a blog. And and we haven't talked much about your own blogs. Now, if if you know you, you don't have a website or you're new to this internet marketing thing, you probably won't set your blog up right away. You'll you'll probably set up your your e-commerce business and then build a blog off of that. Some of you guys who are doing affiliate marketing may build a blog right away, but I'm speaking a little more to you guys who have e-commerce stores and have blogs as well. Now, if if you don't have a blog, you've you, you've got a website but you don't have a blog, um, I've got I've got a little tutorial on how to set that up. So let me know or let your coach know, and and we'll help you actually get your blog set up. But I guess I'm speaking a little more to you guys who have an e-commerce store but also have a blog and haven't really done anything with it. In fact, those of you guys who are here, who has who has their own blog on like attached to their site or in conjunction with their e-commerce store? I know some of you guys do because I've seen them. Yeah, and Patricia, don't worry about it. This is stuff you'll need to learn at some point, but if some of it flies over your head tonight, not a big deal. That's fine. Quite a few of you do. Kirk, you do. I'll just tell you. <laughs> You've got a blog. Sam, you do too. And I, I can direct you guys to where that blog is if you're not sure. Melody, I know you do. Um... Yeah, you guys have blogs. So first of all, what's what's a blog? Somebody define it. We've defined it a few times in these past few webinars. But what is it? What's what's the distinguishing characteristics of one versus just a normal website? Cuz a blog is also a website, right? But what makes a blog a blog? Okay, so I'm seeing some comments, right? Comments is is part of it. If 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 you've got a blog, you can leave comments. Yeah, for sure. Dates. How about how about articles, written articles? Um journaling, yeah. In a chronological way, definitely. It's 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 an informational site, really. I mean, in in its in its simplest form, it's an informational site and you know we've we've talked a little bit about that, so I won't go any more detail on that. But let me ask you a question: What why is it that a that a business needs a blog? Okay, like you guys, the, the majority of you guys have like an e-commerce store, and if, and if you're here listening to this and, and you don't, that's fine. You know we'll we'll teach you to get one. But for those of you guys who've been in the program a little bit and you have a website, you also have you know, you have an e-commerce store. So why do you need a blog too? That's kind of what I want to get at tonight. Because a lot of you guys are like, yeah, I got a blog. I haven't done anything with it though, but I've got one. Or I don't know what to do with it. I don't know how it fits into the grand scheme of what we're doing for marketing, right? Yeah, I mean, it's for marketing. So, I mean, that's 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 absolutely what it's what it's for. I mean, your blog is a way to generate traffic and hopefully generate traffic into your site. I wanna make a list with you guys tonight, and then I'm gonna show you sort of an example of what I mean and how it's worked for me with one of my businesses so that you guys can kind of catch the grand picture of having a blog. Because I, I know when I mention to some of you guys, when I get this question, and it comes up a lot, my clients are like, all right, Trevor, so how do we get traffic to a website? 
Well, we try to get search engine rankings, right? And we're going to use social media to get traffic, Facebook and Twitter. And um, maybe we can do some local advertising. And I'll, I'll often say, well, well, we'll blog, we'll use a blog. And a lot of people are like, well, I don't understand how the blog actually helps generate traffic. That's what I, that's kind of the question I want to answer tonight. Um, so, you know, the intuition behind it. And so I can get you excited about it because blogging should be an exciting thing. I know some of you guys don't love to write. You don't necessarily need to be a good writer either. Um, but, but you definitely need a blog one way or another for sure. So let's go through the reasons then. So a lot of you guys have already said marketing or traffic. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to put that up, up here. You know, we want traffic to the website. It's a way to, it's a traffic generator for sure. But I want to go through the very specifics of why we need one. Okay. Um, and I agree, Linda, we're going to be doing some webinars and content on Facebook and Twitter and, so we'll be teaching you guys social media too. Um, but the blog should be happening um, sooner rather than later. Now, a lot of you guys who are to this point who've been doing marketing with us, you've mostly been focusing on keyword research, on-site SEO, search engine optimization on your site itself, and then a little bit of link building. Some that we've talked about with blog commenting and maybe some directory work. That's kind of what we've been doing so far, but I think the blog should play a role in what you're doing right now. So if you are doing some marketing, I want you to incorporate uh, blogging into it as soon as possible. Um, so anyway, well, let's get into some of the reasons. So number one, um, I'm gonna say, this is, this is sort of a, a great way, and, and there's there's no better way to do this. It's a good way to communicate with your customers. That's number one. Now, how is it that a blog actually does that? How do we communicate with our customers on a blog? Or what makes a blog unique in that way to where it can? I, I would argue that, you know, there's not too many platforms that are like this. Social media is a little bit like this, but on a blog, remember there's a comment section, right? We've been looking at this one for a while getrichslowly.org, right? And one way that getrichslowly.org interacts with their customers is through their comments. Look at this, this specific blog post right here has 130 comments, right? So it's a good way to communicate in kind of an informal setting because with a blog, there's not really any hard and fast rules. You can write articles, you can post pictures, you can kind of keep it interesting. It can be a little more lighthearted or serious. There's there's not any hard and fast rules, um, but it's a great way to communicate with your customers in kind of a less formal setting, for sure. Um, and yeah, I, I agree, Bill, you get their opinion, right? Like, you know, you can read what people think about you because they can leave comments. And that could, I guess that could be a good or a bad thing. Right. If you're doing a good job as a business, those comments may be over overwhelmingly positive, but it's it's just it's a good forum to learn from your customers for sure. OK, so we'll leave that as number one. An important reason, not the most important reason. Number two, I feel like is your your uh, sort of big reason for for blogging. It's it's really what fuels a lot of your a lot of your SEO. OK, and I'm I'm going to explain this more here in just a minute. Let's let's leave this for a second. I want to come back to it here in a few minutes. That's where I might bust out a little a little of my artwork. So stay tuned for that, right? All right, number three. Um now this stat's a little bit older. This stat was actually done just a few years ago. Um let me find it here. Oh, this is the stat. It says sixty percent of blogs um, generate new customers or leads to a site. Okay, that was that was a stat that was done just a couple of years ago. So I, I would imagine that number has increased. So that's that's a pretty good number, and I, I don't even know why it's that low. I would I would venture to guess that it's much higher now because blogs, on a regular basis, get you customers. I mean that's that's the goal of a blog is to help you get more customers to your site. So that. That's not that impressive of a stat. I think it should be higher, but I bet it is if I could find a newer a newer version of it. 
Um, it is what we call sort of like the base of your content marketing strategy. Okay. Which I'm going to say, and I'm going to put this as A right here, provides you content, content for Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. That's one reason why up to this point, guys, if you've been doing marketing with us and we haven't focused on blogging yet, we probably haven't focused on social media much either because social media and blogging kind of go hand in hand. In a blog, you're essentially creating a lot of good content, right? You're creating um, content for your niche or stuff that's interesting about your niche, about your products, about your industry. And, and a lot of that stuff can be very shareable. And you would, you would actually take a really well-written article on your blog and, or, or a video or whatever you post on your blog, and you would also share that in your social media. So it might start on your blog, but it's also shared in your Facebook and it's shared in your Twitter and it's shared in some of your other social media. Well, if you don't have a blog, um, you're, you're sharing other people's content in your social media, or you're just share, or, or you're just sharing products all the time from your site, and nobody likes that. You know, nobody nobody follows social media just to get product products put in their face all the time. They want interesting content shared. So, before your your Twitter and your Facebook become as effective, you have to have content to share outside of just your your store, right? Because most of you guys have just a regular web store with products in it. Well. There's not much, there's not something shareable about that, really. You want really good, unique blog comment, content to share. And so that that should fuel your, your marketing plan as far as that's concerned. So that's that's number four. Um, let's see. Okay, let's go to number five. And stop me if you've got questions on this, because I just want to make this list first. Um, share your expertise. Okay. Now, I mean, let's relate this really, really quick to like, let's say, uh, you know, this site right here that I'm working on. Uh, what, you know, I, I, I want to share my expertise. So what do I mean by that? Like, what's, why would that be valuable if I shared my expertise and my niche? And some of you guys are like, I don't even have any expertise in my niche, so how am I supposed to do this? Well, you'll, we'll, we'll work with you on it, but what, why would that be valuable? And I've kind of alluded to this before on this Uptown Pearl site. Imagine for a second if Uptown Pearl wrote a, a blog post about how to figure out a fake pearl versus a real pearl, right? Like if I'm producing that kind of content, People are going to be bound to trust me a little bit more. In fact, there's a there's a guy that I follow. He's a he's a big gold. He owns a big um, precious metals company where he sells gold, silver, you know, some of the precious metals that you'd invest in. And he he comes out with regular newsletters about the industry and about. In fact, the one that I read just the other day was about how to spot like a fake coin or something if you're investing in in precious metals, how to, how to, how to spot a counterfeit. And he's like, because he's produced all this content, he's sort of considered an authority in the field. And so people come to him and that's eventually what I'd like for Uptown Pearl. I'd like people when they think about, you know, when they go online to look for information about, um, you know, how to tell a real pearl from a fake pearl or the different types of pearls that are out there, or what's the most cost effective type of pearl you know, how do you tell like a genuine one from like a farm raised one? If I have a ton of content that I produced on a blog for that, I'll be considered such an authority in the field and people will trust my brand more, right? So I'll be more recognizable. People will know of Uptown Pearl. Maybe they've never bought from me, but they've read some of my stuff. And at some point in the future, if they ever are in the market to buy a pearl, they're probably going to come to me because I've built some level of trust. So you want to, you want to share your expertise a little bit and build some authority. And for some of you guys, that's going to require a little bit of time and energy to learn your niche a little bit better. That's one reason I've always pushed for you to at least be interested or like your niche a little bit, because you know, you're going to eventually need to learn a little bit more about it. Um, okay. So 
I'll say be an authority. Um, build your brand, something like that. Number six, uh, believe it or not, some of you guys might think I'm crazy for saying this, but blogging is actually kind of fun. Seriously. Um, I, so my, you got to understand my background. I'm a math person, right? So I'm, I'm a finance guy. You know, I, that's, that's my, that's my background. I, uh, I graduated with my, with my bachelor's in finance. And, uh, I, I think in numbers, I'm not necessarily a writer for sure, but when I got into blogging and I found how well it started to send me traffic to my websites and it was always a lot of fun. Like when you get someone who actually comments on a blog that you write, it's a lot of fun to get back on there and comment back and have a dialogue and you can be having this dialogue with customers. It's a lot of fun and it, and it breaks up the rigorous, uh, SEO kind of stuff that you're doing, like all the keyword analysis and the, and the, at the, the hardcore SEO that you're doing on your site even some of the link building, it's fun to take a break and just do something that's that's not so based on a set of rules. Um, so you might think I'm crazy for saying that. And I know some of you guys who aren't really into writing are going to be like, no way, there's no way I can do, I can't do blogging. English may not even be your first language. So you're thinking there's no way I can write, but I'm telling you, you can, and you'll be a very authentic and people will appreciate that. And there really isn't any rules on a blog. So you know, you, you can feel comfortable doing it. So I actually wanted to put that plug in there. That it, it is enjoyable and you'll see that when you get into it. This one, I really agree with this is, uh, you know, you're, you're going to learn your niche. Okay. It gives you an excuse to learn your niche. Like I, when I first started selling these pearls, I didn't, I couldn't tell you the first thing about pearls other than I thought they were way expensive and my wife rarely wore them. So like, that's all I knew about them. My wife didn't even really wear them. So I, I couldn't tell you a thing about them. Um, but as I got into blogging and as I've got into learning about the niche, um, I've, I've gotten a chance to really learn about it. And I'm much more well-educated about what we're selling here. And that's, that's important. Like I, I definitely believe that you can go out and sell a product using our system and our program without being some sort of expert in it, but it, it will never hurt you to know your niche and, and have some experience with it. It'll help you as a marketer for sure. So a blog gives you an excuse to do that. And then I'm going to say last but not least here, um, blogging is cost effective. Okay. Like it's, you get, it doesn't cost you anything for this type of marketing. Now you can hire out blogging. Okay. So if, if the bottom line is like, after we have this conversation today, you're just like, no way in the world. Am I going to blog? Cause I just, I'm uncomfortable with it. I'm not very fast at typing. I don't want to, I mean, I, I a few of my clients are like that. They're just like, I don't want to blog and that's fine. Um, you can hire it out, but it's, it's not, Hey, I guess you can get some, pretty cheap blogging from some, some outsource, uh, outsource places. So you go to like, um, elance.com or, you know, I guess you could go to fiverr.com, but I would encourage a lot of you guys to start doing your own blogging. And I, I'm, I'm a living, breathing, um, piece of evidence that this works because I, I would have been that person a few years ago, but when I got into it and I started, I enjoyed it and I, I really like it now. And, and I think a lot of you guys that are skeptics about it probably will too. But let me, let me focus on this one really quick for a second. All these, all these reasons are, they're great reasons to have a blog as a business, but this one right here, um, I think is, I think is pretty, pretty important. So how does it affect your seat, your, your SEO? Okay. Um, let me show you one of the things it does. Okay. Let's bring out, let's bust out the old drawing pad here, shall we? I always forget which I, which one I do. Online whiteboard. I really should have just a good drawing prepared for you guys, right? <laughs> so, so you don't have to watch me do this. Let's take, um, mm, let's say this is our site right here. This is going to be like your main e-commerce site. Okay. 
So I'm just going to call this your your you know your dot com. Okay. Here's your logo. Here's your banner. Here's some products, whatever. You get the idea. Okay. And our whole goal here is we're trying to get this site, or at least one of the things we're trying to do with our site is to get it to rank well in Google, right? So we want it, we want it ranking high. Well, we've got this other page connected. Usually with uh with a blog, you're gonna have this little link, and I'm gonna put this put this in another color right here. You usually have a little link right here, kind of in your footer. It doesn't matter if it's on the right or your left, but it you'll have a link and that's going to be a link to your blog. And so you've got your blog right here that sort of links, you know, you link to your blog and your blog links to you, but it's this separate page, right? And usually a, a blog is usually built on a, another, another backend system. So you know how you, a lot of you guys use Volusion? Um, I know for uh, Anthony, you use uh, you told me you use Wix, right? For your for your site, there's Wix and there's Shopify and there's Big Commerce. Um, this this one over here, this is typically your you know this is your Volusion site. Okay. Usually a blog um, is either going to be for most of you guys, it's going to be built on a blogger platform. Many of you guys have heard of Blogger or Blogspot. Does that sound familiar to any of you guys? Oh, Weebly. Yeah, Anthony, you're right. Sorry. I was thinking Wix, but Weebly. Yeah, that's what yours is on. So this is your e-commerce one right here. Here's your here's your blog. Have you guys heard of Blogger or Blogspot? Does that sound familiar at all? If not, that's fine. There's another one that I use. It's called, and you guys probably have heard of this one. Maybe not, though. Whoops. Word press. Yeah? Anybody heard of WordPress or Blogger? Just tell me if you haven't. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Like we're this is this is kind of blogging one oh one that we're doing tonight. Okay. These are so these are software programs. And you know what's cool about these programs? They are totally free, and they're really good. You, now, it seems like these days most things that are really, really good are never free, right? This is one of the rare exceptions to that rule. Blogging software is almost always free, and we use we use WordPress and Blogger. Well, most of our clients, um, we we tend to like to have you guys do um, Blogger, okay? Because I think it's uh, Boy, it's an easy platform to learn. And if you've been learning your Volusion platform for your website, Blogger's not too difficult to learn at all. Um, Blogger is actually owned by Google, okay? So Blogger is basically Google's, you know, this is, uh, this is Google's um, software for blogging, okay? So it's it's going to be built on that kind of a platform, and it probably already is. And here's your blog. It's informational, okay? Well, here's the thing about um, a blog. We we like to set it up so it does well for your SEO. So you'll notice that it's going to have um, sort of a special address. And and if you don't have a blog set up, you'll work with your coach on on how to do this. But Let's say your address is, um, let's say it's xyz.com, okay? And that's what that's your store right here. It's xyz.com. Your blog is going to be this. It's called a subdomain. It's going to be blog.xyz.com. This right here is actually really significant okay if if you can have and, and a lot of people when they set up a blog they don't set it up this way like a subdomain it doesn't have to be blog.xyz.com it could also be xyz.com slash blog but regardless it needs to be built on your domain 
Okay, and I'll explain why that's important here in just a second. So if you have a blog, um, for example, Anthony, your blog, do you know off the top of your head if it's built on your your domain or is it built on a separate like WordPress? I think as I looked at your site today, I want to say it was built on your domain. Anyway, let me know. So, okay, um, let me, the, the red's getting a little too much. Let's grab a green here. So, if for those of you guys who have had a blog set up for you, right, I it's been set up like this right here. And that's important because the one of the points of the, the blog that we were mentioning earlier, let's go back to our notes right here. We're saying it fuels your SEO. Well, how does it do that? Well, th this is why. Like, this is why a blog is so critical to your SEO. Think of think of first of all why do people use the internet I know that sounds like a, a really basic question but answer that for me why why do people use the internet for the most part what's the internet do for us why do you pay like 70 bucks a month for the internet because all of us do it and I would suggest there I mean there's a lot of reasons but I bet we could lump it up into a couple of things we're either we're either looking for one information or two we're looking to maybe buy something right and and i would yeah i would i would agree Ro some of you guys have said this roxana you were one and then um oh there's one other here kirk you say escape from reality <laughs> maybe it's because you got the internet because you've got netflix right that's the truth you, you got to have your internet or you can't run netflix no, I mean it's 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 either, you know, it's it's usually information of some sort, you're consuming information or media or you're buying something and I can't remember the statistic. I I I tried to find it before we did the webinar today. But it's some crazy number of like they they ran a they've ran tests on this and when a person logs onto the internet for something, like more than 90% of the time in fact, I think it's the high 90 percentile. It's like 98 percent of the time they're looking for some information. It's not because they're buying a product, but they're looking for information. So let's say if that stat is true, and I've got to find that for sure, you're looking at you know two percent of people that are using the internet are going to go right here to your site because they're searching for a product. But 98 percent of those other searchers on the internet are actually going to be looking for information and that's what your blog is it's information right you have a much greater pool of people that are looking for stuff that your blog is probably going to have as opposed to just going directly to go buy a product and that's a big that's a big deal and that's why you look around the internet today in any any legit business out there if they're selling something they're not just selling a product but they've also got an informational side of their site that's why i need i need uptown pearl here i need the, i need this site to be in the business of providing tons of information about pearls in addition to just selling them for this statistic that we illustrated here if it's true and i and it is i just need to get the stat for you guys i i've the stat i mean it's very prevalent with internet marketers but the bulk of people are looking for information therefore you need a blog because if all these searchers find your blog what happens then there's a chance that you know you're going to get all these searches coming in here and some of them are going to trickle over here and buy from you right i would say the majority probably aren't that they probably are just going to come and they're going to get information and they may bounce off and head off to somewhere else but there's going to be people that are going to come to your blog and then they're going to trickle over to your website, a significant number if you've got a good blog. Um, yeah, Kirk, that's a good point. You've been doing a lot of research yourself, it sounds like you're saying. Seeing some health issues from my grandparents and parents has pushed me to really focus on health more often. Yeah, and you're and you're probably hopping on the internet. I mean, these days we don't run to the library or even go buy a book necessarily. We hop online and we search for it, don't we? We all do it. And now that we're talking about it, you'll probably notice it a little bit more yourself that you do it. So I, 
I, if nothing else, please guys take away from this video that there's just so much more interest and information on the internet than there is a direct product. And not to diminish the, the point that there's tons of people buying because that, that group of people that are buying products every year grows and grows and grows and grows. So that, that pie is just getting bigger. Millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of people are up here in this 2% billions, right? That are actually buying but there's a much bigger pool of people that are searching for information. Okay. That's, that's reason number one. Let me, let me delete this for a second. Let me see if I can clear this out. I just forget how to delete this. There we go. Okay. Here's the second reason. So you've got, we've got our site again up here, right? This is our, xyz.com right okay and then here is here's our blog link and they're linking together again and I'm putting these squiggly lines to signify information right because that's what a blog is this is blog dot xyz dot com okay so we back to this reason again fuels seo let me let me let me elaborate here one more time on this so let's say your blog you do a really good job on it Okay, and what I mean by a really good job is you don't just put up a bunch of crappy information that's not well thought out and not well researched. Like you, you want to really post good information on a blog. And if you do a good job and you post this really good information that you're finding online, that you're kind of regurgitating onto your blog, certainly we're not going to copy anything and paste it onto our blog. Tonight isn't really about exactly the how we're going to use the blog. I just kind of want to show you why it works and then we'll get into more of the hands-on stuff as we go but the point is if you write a lot of good content for a blog there's a good chance that you know this uh let's draw this in another color here's random website here out on the internet that somehow finds your blog and they like it enough to where they link to it okay and then you've got this uh you've got this other blog that's kind of in a related industry. Okay? Let's use the Pearl example. Let's say this is a say this is another like Pearl informational blog and they found a really well-written article that I wrote on my site and then they linked to this. Okay? And because you've got all this really great information on the site, you're getting all these exterior sites that are linking to you. And believe me, it happens. The best example I have is on one of my sites, I wrote an article this is on my finance site. I wrote an article once about, um, oh, which one was it? I can't remember the topic exactly, so I'm not going to tell you what the topic was because I can't remember. But it was on a topic where um, this university, you guys might have heard of this. It's it's uh, Utah State University. And they're not huge, right? But they're they're based here in Utah. Well, their, their business... Um, division like their their business school found one of my blog posts and they actually linked to it because it was something about like some statistics on budgeting that i'd found and they had they had found my website that had that statistic and so they linked to me because they wanted to show me as a resource or whatever and so i i i got that link so that would be you know that would be representative of a link because i had some good content but anyway your so your blog's generating all these links right and in our other in our other presentations, what have we talked about? What do, what do links do for a website? In 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 theory, There's usually two things they'll do specifically. But what what do you guys remember about that? How does it? How would a link benefit my blog here? Especially considering it came from, you know, USU.edu. Yeah, so it builds trust, right? That's the big thing. At number one, it's it's building trust with Google, and then number two, you can get some, you can get direct traffic, 
right? So I, I got direct traffic through my, some of these links. Like some people will find you through these sites out here and they'll, and they'll come into your blog. But the big thing is if you're building links into your blog and it's built on a domain that has your xyz.com in it, these links that are coming into your blog aren't just going to push your blog's rankings up, but they're going to push your xyz.com's rankings up. Does that make sense? Because it's built on a subdomain. So all these links, yeah, they're they're helping the blog rank higher, but they're also helping your homepage rank higher, your product pages rank higher. They build the trust of your e-commerce store as well. So if you have this really awesome informational side of your site, and it's doing well and it's building links, well, guess what? Like the rest of the, your actual main e-commerce site is moving right up the search engine along with it. You're not building links necessarily into the site here. The links are coming into your blog and then indirectly helping your e-commerce side. So does that make sense, guys? Are you kind of following that? Of course, if some of you guys haven't been to some of my other link building um, webinars, it might not make as much sense, but you can see why a really well done blog is going to directly help your website sell more because it's going to help it rank higher. That's that's the big thing. So that's one of the big takeaways I want you guys to have. Um, let me show you one other little example here and then we'll finish up. Um, I have a, where is it here? Sorry, I'm going to drag around the screen. Um, oh, here it is. Let me bring this over here. Okay, this is one of my sites. This is one of my e-commerce sites. Um, I'm kind of letting it die down, honestly. I haven't been buying inventory for it as much, but it still it still serves as a really good um, object lesson to the value of a blog. So here's my blog on this site. And I wrote a blog post, and it's informational. All it is is it's, it's called Buy a Mockingjay Pin in Malaysia. Now, I, so I sell these. So you guys who don't know, I sell these little pins. I'll go to the home page real quick. This is one of my sites. It's called Mockingjay Pin Store. I've had it for a few years. All it sells is these little movie memorabilia pins. Okay. And I've got a blog for it right here. And I wrote this blog post specifically for people who I found in my research, in my keyword research, that there were a lot of people actually typing in, you know, like buy Mockingjay Pin Malaysia. And so I created a, a, a blog post for just that, okay? I put this Malaysian flag there. And then it was really, it was it seems kind of silly, but it's just like step one, go to MockingJPinStore.com. Step two, select what pin you like. Step three, buy it. Step four, wear it with pride. And so anyway, I talked about um, just anyway, how to, how to buy a Mockingjay pin if you're from Malaysia. And that was my blog post, okay? I wrote this clear back in July of 2013. So this was this was a couple of years ago. Um, let me show you the stats on this. Here's here I'm in Google Analytics here, and your Google the neat thing about Google Analytics for those of you guys who don't know is it tracks your statistics. So this graph right here is a graph of traffic that goes directly to just this page that finds my site through this blog post. And you can see over the years, um, I wrote it here in mid-July. And you can see, like if I run my mouse over this, it's averaging one or two visitors a day that'll find this page. Some days are bigger. I have a big upswing in the, during the holidays here, 26, 25, 22. Anyway, over the course of the last few years, there's been 1,370. You can see it right here, 13 and, 1,300, 1,370 people have found this blog post, okay? And they do it because when they do a keyword search, this blog post actually ranks really high in Google. If you type in buy a Mockingjay pin Malaysia, my my blog my blog is the very first thing that comes up. So, sure, I mean it doesn't sound like much. Like I'm I, at the start I was only getting one or two visitors a day, but it took me probably a total of 30 minutes. I don't know, maybe 40, 45 minutes total to write out this blog post, 45 minutes of my time. And over the last few years, that 45 minutes that didn't cost me a dime, it just cost me 45 minutes of time. It's been able to generate 1,370 visitors. 
because it got a decent ranking in Google. And so I, I stand to benefit from this blog post as long as I keep this website up because people are finding this forever and ever and ever. So that 45 minutes of time that I spent, it continues to actually provide me value. And I've closed sales off of this, a bunch of them. A lot of people who are out in Malaysia that are looking to buy one of these, they find this page and then they turn around and buy a product from me. And, and that cost me 45 minutes. Now, initially that 45 minutes, I, I did it. And you can see on the graph, it, it doesn't, it's not like I got this huge spike in traffic. I was only getting a couple of visitors a day, but a couple of visitors a day over the course of several years equals thousands of visitors. And, and so I've gotten sales as a result. So if you think about it, if you're blogging on a regular basis about different topics, and each blog that you write generates a couple of visitors a day. Well, what would happen if you had a blog associated with your website that had 150 written articles that you've worked on over the last few years? You would probably be generating thousands of visitors into this blog, which would in turn help you get more sales. It would help build links. It would help your e-commerce site rank higher. Like you can see that there's just massive, massive benefits to blogging. So it's, it's a little more of an investment and you can see that here. Your return on your investment continues to grow the longer your website is open. So for all of those reasons tonight, guys, I hope, I hope you can go away from this saying, and this is my goal the whole time, I want you to go away saying, I need a blog for my website. And if you don't have a blog, I've got some material on how to get one created. If you do have a blog, it's time to consider uh, the start of utilizing it. It's time to use it now. It's time to create content and, and do exactly what we're talking about here. Build the links that we were discussing. Um, get higher rankings. Help it, help it build the authority of your site. There's just so many benefits to it. Now, in subsequent weeks, guys, I know we haven't talked tonight about how to choose topics and how to actually get in there and really work on the blog. I'd like to do that with you guys um, over the next few Thursdays. So, I think that's exactly what we'll do. Um, I, I would imagine we'll probably dedicate the next several weeks to learning how to use the blogger software, to what to write, how to write it, where to get pictures, what if I'm not a great writer, what do I do then? I mean, we're going to answer all of those issues. The point of tonight is simply just that you need a blog and here's why. And hopefully you guys got that out of our conversation. Okay. Um, all right, so let's finish up. I'm going to leave it open for just a minute is all, and we're going to take some questions if you've got any more. Otherwise, um, we will finish up. And Robert, I already see you asked one. You said, would you include a link in your body or in the body of your blog to your site? Yeah, definitely. Your Your blog is, your blog not only like maybe in the footer of your blog or in one of the side menus. If you ever write something on your blog that makes any sense at all to link to your site, you'll link to it. Um, and you'll, you'll see that I've done it here in the Mockingjay blog. I mean, right here I say step one, go to MockingjayPinStore.com or I have a link to my Facebook page here, or I link to a contact us page. And so, yeah, you want to definitely link over because any of that traffic you're generating from your blog, it's nice to send it over to your site. Um, number one, generally, Brenda, if you're doing affiliate marketing, you're going to create a blog first. If you're doing normal e-commerce, and that's what most of our clients start with, you're going to build your website first. So number one, make sure you get a website, you choose a niche, you get suppliers, you get it built. Then when you get into the marketing, that's when you start getting into the blog side of things. So I, I would do a normal website first for most of you guys. A few of you others that are going to go down a little bit of a different path that are doing some affiliate marketing, then we start with a blog. But um, most, of my, most of our clients start with e-commerce. Um, let's see. Kirk, you said, I've never done my own blog, but I'm trying to stay open-minded. That if I do the research and follow your prop your proper protocol for commenting, it should all work out. It it will, yeah. And the, you know, it's it's the cool thing is I'm not vetting you guys to make sure like only only you guys who are really great writers can do a blog or whatever. That's just not true. Any of you guys can do a blog. And yeah, if you follow the protocol, you'll you'll probably end up doing fine. 
Does your blog have to relate to your products? Typically, yeah. Yeah, you'll want them all related. So, but what's interesting is it doesn't have to be uh, so directly related. So, like for example, um on the the Uptown Pearl site, um for a blog post on that could be like how do you how do you decide between a real or a fake pearl? But it also could be a blog that talks about um pearls being part of a fashion trend. So it could be about fashion and not necessarily the product directly, if that makes sense. Or it, like for a client that has a site that's about like, if you're selling like kids toys or something, just to, as an example, your blog could have content, not just about toys, but about kids and um, raising kids and tips on raising kids. So it needs to be related in some way, but it doesn't have to be so completely related if that makes sense it needs to at least have some relation um yeah any any other questions at all otherwise we'll finish up hopefully you guys now know and I'll, let me leave my notes back up here sorry i've got the the post up here right here these are the reasons why you need a blog. And if somebody asked you that, I'd hope you'd be able to spout out a few with some emphasis being on the SEO part, the link building and the traffic and you know, the investment into your traffic that it can it can do for you, like I showed you guys a few minutes ago. You should be able to tell people why and then um and then we'll get into the how part as as we continue to do these webinars. Not sure, Patricia. I know I know that's in the mix, so stay tuned for that. We'll definitely do one on that for sure. Yeah, Linda, for you, um knowing your knowing your niche, it I mean it could be anything related to kids. I mean absolutely anything from tips to raising them, toys they like, something educational in relation to them. Mickey Mouse, for heaven's sakes, right? Disneyland. I mean, anything that's even fringe related to kids, your blog would work out just fine. No, and not, yeah, not just for babies, even though you've got kind of an emphasis there for sure. Okay. Cool, guys. Well, it's awesome to have you all here. Hopefully, this was informative. Uh, Thursday night, next week, we'll see you. And if you want to see this again, uh, we've recorded it tonight, so we'll hopefully get it posted up onto our website and onto YouTube as soon as possible. Thanks again. We'll see you guys.